Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go over my March favorites and fails. You know, I love this time of the month. I feel like I've been trying quite a few new things, especially like concealers. <laughs> i tried so many new concealers recently, but I haven't fallen in love with a lot of things, so there's not gonna be as much in here. However, I'm not gonna insert stuff or talk about things just to talk about them. I'm only gonna talk about things that I've truly been loving. So let's go ahead and start off with numero uno. And that is from Pat McGrath. This is one of the mini palettes that she did. This is the Sublime Bronze Ambition. And what I love about this is this is the actual packaging. And you can see my review and I do a tutorial with every one of the palettes. But this one's just my favorite. This is what she looks like. I can get such great dramatic and neutral wearable looks with this. The blendability is perfect. The colors are insanely beautiful. I just, I can't get over the quality of this palette. And for the price point, I just think it's so much better than her $125 palettes. And it doesn't, you don't sacrifice the quality at all. Whole nother price point here, but the Milani palettes have blown me away. These are 20 bucks a piece. However, you can get like little coupon codes. I believe I got a 15, 15 or 20% off in my email whenever I signed up. And this one right here, I think this one is my favorite of the two. This is the Bold Obsessions. This one has the metallic shades as well as the mattes and this is the first drugstore, I know the 20 is a little higher, but drugstore item that I've really, like, even gone to after filming. I've reached for these several times this month, month, and even before I filmed the video, I've really been enjoying these. So this one's my favorite of the two, but both of them are great. This is the Most Love Mattes. The packaging on these are a little, like, okay, but... Again, we gotta consider price point. I'm more concerned about the quality on the inside. Now, some of these you do have to add and build with, but the thing is that they do build. A lot of the times, shadows can just blend away to nothing, and I find that this palette just works really well. And I have yet another eyeshadow palette. Clearly, I have been enjoying my eyeshadow this month. And this one is from a fellow YouTuber, Kristen Dominique. This is the Dominique Latte palette. I have not used this on camera yet, but trust me, I am going to. I have used every shade in this palette and there is not a dud. I love them all. They blend really nice pigmentation, you guys. Yeah, it's there and I love the shade right here. These shadows surprised me and in a very positive way. I got mine on Ulta.com. I think it's amazing that she was able to get her brand in there. And just based off of the quality of this one, I know she's got a new one coming out. I will grab that because I liked this one so much. A new mascara I've been using quite a bit is from Maybelline. This is the Total Temptation Mascara. This is really great. I'm, you know, nothing beats my Lancome Monster Big, nothing. But this is almost like the Too Faced Better Than Sex and Monster Big had a baby. And it's a little bit drier, but what I like about that is that you just build and build and build. And my lashes look wispy. They don't look clumpy. They just look so beautiful. You do have to watch out for a little bit of flakiness, but it doesn't attach. Like, it doesn't get stuck on your face. I just go like that and it's gone. But I really have been loving this mascara. This little guy is from NARS. This is the Kosher de Soleil palette. I bought both. The other one is the Rev Sale. I thought that I was going to get the most use out of the Rev Sale, but this is the one I have been gravitating towards. The other one is more of a highlighter palette, and then this one is highlight and cheek. I love it. I absolutely love it. There's not a lot of sheen kind of blushes that I actually end up liking, and this is definitely one of them. I love this center shade, but believe it or not, even the darker shade works on me, and I'm an NC20. This shade right here is too dark for me for a highlight, but I have used it on my eyes, and it works really well. I just think that the formulation on this is really nice, blendable. It can be built up or even sheared down, and it's gorgeous. If you are looking for a super duper easy to use glitter that actually just looks like glitter. So not like the Stila shadows that have kind of a base to them. They're thicker, more opaque, and have a lot of, they're glittery, but you you just can't really see through them as well as you can with a glitter. And they're smaller sizes. This is Houdini from Lemonhead. 
And basically this takes out all the work for you. It is a legit glitter in a paste. So you can use your finger and apply it or a brush. I, I find it's easier to apply with a brush. The base is clear and I don't know if you guys can see that shift. I use this in my spring makeup look and it's really, really neat. Let me see. I will say this is going to linger around, you know. <laughs> Glitter is the herpes of the makeup world, we all know. You can see, like, when I turn, because the base is clear, you don't see it. And then when you're walking around outside or anything, you just catch the glitter and it's so beautiful. And you can really kind of pack it on, but I find it to be a little too thick whenever I do that. I like to just add a thin layer of it and it's gorgeous. I've had people ask me about this and the Reflex Teal or something from MAC. This one, again, bigger size glitter and this one's a little bit deeper. So they're not the same, but you can get a similar look out of them. Again, even after I wash my face and stuff, I still end up having a little bit of glitter like in my lashes somewhere. Puffin had one on his lips. I was like, how did that even happen? He was like, I don't have glitter on my lip. I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> and then like I just wiped off my hand with a wipe, a, a makeup wipe, and it's still there. So just be aware, it is glitter and it is a little bit difficult to make completely go away. And then we've got hoops. <laughs> I know this does not have anything to do with makeup, but like these hoops, these, my other gold ones, I have been obsessed with hoops. I just put them through my plugs and I don't know, I feel like, like, I don't know, fancy or something. I've really been enjoying them. My question to you guys is, I can only wear them if they have like this style, let's see. And these came from World Market, they were like $4. These are from Nordstrom. But this has like this little clasp and then you go right inside this little hole. These are the kinds that I need and then this one does the same thing but it's even lower so I don't have to worry about the backing actually showing like moving around. If you guys know of some great places that have this style, because it's hard for me to find, leave that comment down below. And for my last favorite, it is actually other YouTubers showing love to smaller channels or even bigger channels. I have been shown so much support and love this month and it came at such a good time, like you guys don't even know. I appreciate it so much. I want to shout out two people that showed me love and that is Rosita Applebaum. Oh my gosh. She is the cutest, be most beautiful, and very calm. Like, I can be a little rambunctious sometimes, and there's definitely people that are even more so than me, but she's so calm and soothing to listen to. Again, she's gorgeous, and she just, she's talented. She tries new makeup, and I find her to be very genuine in her thoughts on them. And then we have Andrea. Okay, I'm gonna mess up her last name, so I'm just gonna post it <laughs> right down here. I am known for mispronouncing things so I don't want to do that to her. She had commented on my Natasha Denona video and I saw her face I was like hey I watch you. <laughs> so that was a cool moment and if you haven't checked her out do so. She does everything from higher end to drugstore. I find myself watching her especially for drugstore. I'm trying to be able to get into it and let you guys know what I think about certain products and watching someone like that it makes it so much easier to just weed out the bad and try and find the good and again she's very calm. I like people that are calm. I do watch them like crazy people but I like that calm kind of tone. And then for some smaller channels which funny because they're all bigger than me but smaller still I want to shout out three that I have been loving recently. The first one is Lauren May Beauty. She is completely opposite of my channel. She likes to do like the anti-consumerism. She talks a lot about different things in the makeup community and I just find her to be refreshing. Again very different from what I do but I still appreciate it and she's so cute. You guys she's so cute and when she had up her Christmas like thing behind her, I was like, please just leave that up forever. It's the cutest background in the entire world. Jen loves reviews. I really like her series talking about new makeup that's coming out. Beauty news as well. I've been a beauty news fan for like forever, but I find Jen to be very honest and unapologetically so, and I really enjoy that. And then the last one is Michelle Wang. I collaborated with her on the Natasha Denona palette. She did a tutorial, I did a tutorial, and 
she reviews a whole lot of high-end stuff. So if you watch me for my high-end reviews, you will love her. Definitely run over and check her out as well as everybody else. I will have everyone's links down below so it's easy access to them. Now for my fails, dun dun dun. Natasha, you are in here again. This is the second time. What's going on, honey? <laughs> All right, the Tropic palette for the quality being different than her other ones, it's overpriced for me. I'm still gonna use it, I have used it a couple times. But the Mini Sunset Palette, absolutely not. I duped these shadows, and I'm not even the dupe girl. I've talked about that, like it's not really something I do a whole lot of, but I just felt like it was necessary. The mattes were just fine, those shimmers were terrible absolutely terrible. I have even since tried like flaking it off, you know, digging brush in. It just doesn't work for me. And I know it's $25, but honestly, it's like really high up for the price per gram. You are better off just buying the singles, both for price and for quality. The Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. Now I know this has been back and forth. I've seen other people that don't like it and other people that love it. For me, I tried it even after the video. I tried applying less and what happened is my makeup ended up looking a little bit patchy. I tend to use a little bit more powder down here and then less upward. It did look a little bit better where I used a brush, which in turn ended up with less powder on my face, but it, at the end of the day, it was still very dry feeling. I felt dehydrated. As soon as that cooling sensation went away, I felt like every bit of hydration in my skin was gone. And it also not only deep, deepened up underneath my eyes, it deepened up my foundation as well. I think that that powder is going to be very personal, personal preference. But I think it's a huge gimmick, and that's just my opinion. All right, you guys, that is it for the video. Please let me know down below what you have been loving or maybe not loving so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.